firstly, the, for me, the clinical data is very good. Uh, secondly, uh, and this is a, a game changer for me, is the fact that patients can self-catheterize and they can use it at home, especially in the, the uh, in situation we've got at the, uh, COVID at the moment. It's been it's been a godsend. Uh, a lot of patients are isolating, so we've been able to get the, the treatment to them at home, and they have not had to come into hospital. When COVID first started, um, the only patients we were doing were urgents and cancers. So for three, four months, we didn't no patients with recurrent UTIs or painful bladder syndrome actually entered the hospital. So you've got a lot of patients who were desperately need of treatment didn't start off on it. And other patients who were doing well on that treatment uh, had to stop it. Uh, and these poor people have been suffering in silence. I, I treat uh, uh, bladder pain syndrome patients holistically. I mean, the most important thing when you see a patient with bladder syndrome, uh, pain syndrome is actually believe to believe them. So these sort of patients have seen maybe five or six doctors before they've been to see me. History of recurrent, well, they've been treated with recurrent UTIs, treatments haven't worked. So the first and most important thing is to put the idea into a patient's mind that this is what you may have. Okay, and then I tell them off to go, go off and read. Uh, there's, lo there's lots of good information available on the internet about uh, bladder pain syndrome. Once I've done the cystoscopy and done a biopsy to make sure there's nothing to worry about, I start off with so your, your basic lifestyle interventions, things like you know, losing weight, stopping smoking, reducing your alcohol intake, reduce the, 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 those sort of the, the, those things which we know can uh, exacerbate the symptoms. And if that doesn't work, we go into oral therapies, anti-inflammatories, uh, antidepressants like amitriptyline. I use cimetidine, H2 receptor antagonists. Uh, for some patients, we use Elmiron. If the oral therapies haven't worked, then, then the behavioral therapies haven't worked. Uh, then we go on to intravesical treatment. Uh, in an ideal world, it'd be nice if all our patients could do that. Uh, but you need to have, be fairly well motivated and you've got to be reasonably dexterous as well. And something, when I see a patient who's got recurrent UTIs, which are not responding to treatment or pain, got uh, painful bladder syndrome, one of the first things I do check is to give me an idea about whether, where we're going with them is their dexterity. So one particular patient comes to mind as a young lady, the teacher. Now, it's very difficult for somebody like her to be allowed one a day off a week outside uh, in term time to come in and have an induction treatment then to continue with the maintenance and uh, so for somebody like her it's ideal the the major part of my practice actually isn't the bladder pain patients it's recurrent uti patients but as you start using this treatment you do realize there's other indications for it so I, I use it for patients who've got overactive bladder who don't respond to anticholinergics and don't respond to botox uh, I, I use it for patients who have got radiation cystitis. Uh, it seems to work quite well with them. I, actually, I just started using it on a patient with the colovocycle fistula as well. Um, so there are, other, there are other indications for it. A lot of these patients are quite desperate, but you've got to be honest, you can't guarantee it's going to make them better. It improves things for them.